Ladies and gentlemen, Raphael himself. Thank you for having me. So, Raphael, what was the Renaissance like? I mean, there was the feudalism, the Black Death, the arts, and the reformation and adjustment of Christianity by Martin Luther. I agree. The Renaissance between the 14th to 17th century was a time of great change. To elaborate for the viewers, a political, social, economic hierarchy in Europe, dubbed by the name feudalism, was where people were ranked one above the other. Each part of this pyramid had a responsibility to the people who ranked above and below ranks. Feudalism consisted of five different classes, the king, the higher clergy, the nobles, the lower clergy, which included knights and lesser nobles, and the serfs slash peasants. It was very difficult to move places. Feudalism was based on land, loyalty, and duty. Nobles or knights were awarded fiefs, portions of land, in exchange for fighting for the king. However, the king wasn't the highest of the social pyramid. The pope was considered the most powerful, and the system demanded that everyone owed allegiance to the king and their immediate superior, the church. Most of the people in the Middle Ages were peasants. Peasants were categorized into two groups, serfs or freemen. Serfs were peasants owned by noblemen to be their slaves and work their land. Freemen were peasants who were free to move around and were paid to work for nobles or knights. The feudal system lasted for hundreds of years until the peasant revolt in 1337. The peasants violently revolted for being heavily taxed and required to join military service, and many thought that this was unfair. Then came the bubonic plague from 1347 to 1350. This resulted in one third of Europe's population dead. But the Black Death also brought many primarily economic benefits. Nobles who were able to hold on to their manors began to lend out their land and sell it to their serfs. Serfs were released from their obligations to the lords, which resulted in the feudal system collapsing. And there was an increase in urban population. As the town grew, the use of money increased. One believed that individuals should follow the rules, rituals, and teachings of the Roman Catholic Church. The others believed that individuals should question and respond to the Bible. Realization of their corrupt church, the Protestant Reformation occurred. The 16th century movement to reform the doctrines and practices of the Roman Catholic Church, which resulted in the formation of Protestant Church, led by Martin Luther. This created significant political and cultural changes. While we are on the topic of changes, perhaps no other invention has changed the world as much as the invention of the printing press. The rapid spread of Renaissance ideas was made possible when Johann Gutenberg invented the mechanical printing press around the mid-1400s. By 1500, there were more than 200 printing presses in Venice, printing presses in 250 German towns, presses in nearly all the cities of the Netherlands. The Renaissance was also a time of great scientific and artistic advancements. Art reflected the new thinking of humanism. Da Vinci's paintings were indisputably connected with science and nature. His inventions, like the parachute or ornithopter, have done tremendous efforts in the scientific world. He dissected human cadavers once the Pope allowed it and made detailed drawings and notes that were used in paintings. Leonardo inspired many painters to adopt a more naturalistic approach. He wrote about his painting techniques in his widely read treatise on painting. His influence was, however, limited by the church's control. Leonardo, for example, was unable to publish his results on his anatomical research because the Catholic hierarchy found the dissection of bodies immoral. This is why many of his discoveries and theories were forced to be kept secret. His thoughts were written by Florentine in his notebooks that use mirror writing that cannot be deciphered easily. It was until a century or more after his death, many of his scientific discoveries and findings were not disclosed. It was truly a time of rebirth. Aren't you going to talk about me, the great Raphael? Oh, would you look at the time. Bring in the next person. Wow, Fukuzawa Yuhichi. Where are you from? Meshi era, me no speak English. Wow, 
the 1500s of Japan. What was it like at that time? Government crazy. Very indecisive. Indeed. The Japanese regime was at a time of stress, whether to stay in isolation or modernize, opening themselves to Western European countries. The hierarchical social class structure was, in order, Shogun, who was in charge of the Bakufu, the Bakufu, the government, samurai, hereditary warriors, farmers, artisans, merchants, outcasts, people whose job was related to death, and lastly, non-humans people who survived by performing activities that were frowned upon. Like the Renaissance, it was near impossible to move from one's inherited social status to a higher one. Yido Japan's feudal-like rigid class began to change. The roles for many people in society have changed as urbanization occurred. Yido developed into a city of over 1 million inhabitants by 1720, and many castle towns such as Osaka, Hiroshima, and Nagasaki became large urban centers. The three metropolises were Iyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. Ido was primarily famous for being the government center. Kyoto was Japan's early capital and home to the imperial palace and the emperor, and Osaka was a large commercial center. New art forms and cultural activities emerged, literature, drama, music, and crafts. During isolation, arts and entertainment became more and more desired in Japan. Basho Matsuo is considered to be the first great poet to write haiku. He would often participate in competitions with friends in which they would compose linked verses called renga that would be two or three lines linked together. Gradually, Basho developed the haiku. It is now written all over the world. People desired luxury items and more forms of entertainment. Kabuki theater did not allow women actors. Geishas allowed women to work as entertainers. Baraku Theater had puppet plays performed for an adult audience, and they were performed by non-humans. Woodblock let paintings be made into copies. These copies were inexpensive and available to large audiences. Christianity was despised in Japan, and any Christian missionaries would be executed, but the government now institutes religious freedom. Japan was unified under one central government. Transportation routes helped to unify the country. Farmers improved farming technology, grew better varieties of crops, and developed new methods of irrigation that greatly increased food productions. Japan signed unequal treaties with France, Britain, Russia, and the Netherlands, and were pressured by Western powers to end isolation, which led Japan to realize isolation was no longer possible and that they needed to compete with the West to maintain their sovereignty. And due to the civil unrest, Japan was in need of a new emperor. Before a new government could be established, the military intervened and made Meiji Emperor, marking the end of the 250-year-old Tokugawa era. The Irakura mission brought back the ideas to reform the educational system, shift from the current system to participatory system to representative system, encourage private businesses to develop an economic expansionism to grow and to modernize. The Edo period lasted from 1639 to 1853, and the Meiji period was from 1868 to 1912. So, Yukichi, do you want to let the viewers know who you are? Me write books. Modernization good. Fukuzawa Yukichi was an influential author, educator, and business entrepreneur. He was a member of the Irakura mission to the West and became a strong advocate for American-style democracy. In 1860, he was asked to be a member of the Shogun Envoy and made his first trip to the U.S. He became an authority on Western political views and encouraged Japanese citizens to view change as a positive process. Thanks for being here, Yukichi. Now, here is Cortez. So, Cortez, you feel good for conquering Aztec's land and calling it your own? Best day of my life. The thrill as I get the leader hostage. You see, Aztec's hierarchical pyramid during the reigning years, 1300 to 1500, was as follows. Emperor, nobility, priests, and lastly, commoners, which included the Tlatok, Tecutin, men, and women. The Spanish hierarchical pyramid was, in order, king, nobility, priests, then commoners. 
Spanish societies benefited a lot from the libraries left behind the Jewish and the Muslims. The emperor was the leader and ruler of the Aztec people. The nobility were called the Pipleton, which were the ruling members with the emperor. And the priests could not marry. The commoner, called the Tlatoc, is the major person in charge. Priests had high positions of authority. They decided which days were lucky, when to hold sacrifices, when to go to war, and when to hold special ceremonies. The Spanish monarchy reduced the powers of the Catholic Church and gained the ability to choose the individuals for important positions for the clergy. Exchange of goods and services for the Aztecs included salt and stone mining, tribute, farming, technology and engineering, barbers, herbalists, and food slash drinks. Exchange of goods and services for the Spanish included olives, grapes, weeds, rice, and fruit, which grew from Castile. Spain had mostly cottage industries rather than a strong manufacturing industry. Because of war and a narrow economy, Spain could not produce enough. They acquired so much silver and gold that it caused massive inflation. For the Aztecs, medicine bundles were sacred because of their connection to the gods. Sacrifice was a ritual that was normalized amongst the Aztecs, so it wouldn't come as a shock to them. As others had their treasures, the Aztecs' form of treasure was human blood, and extracting it was also a way to please their god of fertility. They believed without sacrifice, the world would end. This is why the Aztec practice of sacrifice was not considered murder. The Moors influenced Spanish sculptures and architectural styles. The Spanish had one religion, Christianity, and their deeds marked their afterlife destination. So sadly, the Spanish Inquisition kicked out and killed many Jews and Muslims to save Christianity. Wow! I can't believe I disrupted the life of the geniuses. But the Aztec dissected people's hearts for their made-up gods. Maybe it was for the best? Maybe. Just maybe. Thanks for being on the show, Cortez. No, thank you! Let's take a moment to realize what great these three civilizations have done for us. The Aztecs have brought the idea of soccer and calendars. To explain, the Aztecs planned their lives with two calendars, a solar and ritual calendar, both consisting of 183 days. The Spanish came up with the Gregorian calendar in 1582, which the whole world uses today. The Japanese have come out of their shell and helped the world in the digital revolution and contributed to popularizing puppetry and the Renaissance brought us humanism, the idea of humans and their values, potential, and worth, worrying less about the afterlife and parachutes designed by Da Vinci himself. Thank you folks for listening and I'll see you another time.